Hello friends, it's Lauren with Craft Some Joy. Welcome, welcome. And I'm just gonna kind of get started while um, hopefully we've got some folks here who can join this live YouTube uh, progress on projects episode nine. We are really gonna dig in today into photo organization and just spend a little time with the whole process and maybe answer some questions and uh, see if you can really um, kind of get a handle on what all of this, uh, this whole photo uh, backlog and how to handle a photo backlog and just kind of the whole process of organizing your photographs. So I'm here, this is gonna be a little different kind of video. I'm, um, it's new, so hang on with me because um, I'm gonna apologize uh, in the beginning for any kind of bad lighting or any kind of glare and bumpiness because I really want this to be a working video. I want this to kind of just show you the process and I'm kind of scrolling through. This is my setup down in my craft room. I'm in a basement and so, I ended up bringing this six foot table down here. You can see the six foot table. And then I just lined up all of my photo boxes and just tried to start digging into this process. And what was really interesting is that I kind of learned that you have to go into a bit of chaos. You know, I think that's part of it. And if you have a big backlog of photographs, there's a little bit of chaos that has to happen and you have to kind of deal with that and learn from it and then learn how you're going to manage it. And really that's what I've been doing pretty much for the last couple of weeks is saying, how am I going to deal with the backlog of photos that I have? Knowing kind of the types of album making that I want to do and having the organizational systems that I like. What am I going to do with this huge backlog of photos? So I'm just going to check in and see if I can find you guys and um, who is here with me. So let me see if I can find um, my live part. And let me see. Here we are. Okay. So now I can just, whoops, I've got to turn the volume down so you guys don't hear all that. And um, if you are with me, I'd love to hear. You can, I'm looking at my live chat now, I'm hoping. Um, here we go. Live chat. Let's see. Where? Okay, live chat. Oh, there's the button. Okay, so if you'd like to check in, tell me. If you're joining me and where you're from, I can, great, Anita. Hi, Anita. Hi from Sweden. Awesome. Wow. Love it. You know, I just love YouTube because you just get people from all over the place, right? I mean, that is just awesome, awesome. Okay, so as people, if you feel like it, check in and um, jump in at any time and ask questions because I'm just going to kind of roll through a few things um, as I'm kind of showing you my table. Oh, now everybody's saying hello. Hi, guys. <laughs> Deborah, Sheila, Cheryl, thanks for joining. And ah, another Southern Californian. Yay. Hi. Um, so anyhow, okay, let's get started. So for, for those of you uh, New York, awesome, awesome. So for those of you who are not familiar, I'm going to just give you a little bit of backlog, a backstory about how I've gotten myself organized. And I hope by now, if you've seen any of my videos on my channel, you'll know that the thing that kind of where I started was with my pot planner. And um, you can see I had to put in the giant rings because... This has just gotten bigger and bigger as I've added more to it, but this is how I keep myself organized on paper. And it's super, super important to kind of get everything down on paper in one place. So if you haven't 
heard about the Progress on Projects Planner, you can just go to my website. There are free downloads. There are also pretty downloads if you would like to purchase pretty ones. But you have um, the, my first pop videos goes through all the details on how you get this planner organized. But now, now that I have an idea of where things are and kind of the projects I want to make, now the big part of this planner that I'm using and why this is here right next to my photos is because I'm really taking a look at my kids. You can see over here I have four boxes set up over here for all my kids. And um, this is a new thing. This is kind of when I first started, I, I had my boxes organized in a little different way. And that's when I realized that, you know, I had to kind of, uh, again, like I said, go into that chaos and realize how I needed to organize things. So one of the first things I had to do was figure out <laughs> what kind of boxes I needed. And so I just took a piece of paper. This is just a scratch paper. And I started kind of uh, writing out what kind of boxes I needed, where I needed to put photographs. And when I first started, I thought I had my power sort boxes. These are the power sort boxes from Creative Memories. And I swear by these boxes, they have revolutionized how I organize. If you can get your hands on them, I have them on my uh, link to Creative Memories, but they are by far a great way to organize. Um, so I decided before, I thought it was Library of Memories, different kind of boxes, um, theme albums, so forth. And then I realized what I really needed to do was to categorize each of my kids into their own box. Just because of where I was in their album making process. Now, if you have um, kids and they are already organized and you've already done a lot of their albums, you might not need a whole box. You could probably condense that down. But I needed to have a box for each of my kids. And I'm gonna explain a little bit more on how I'm gonna use these boxes in a minute. And then I realized that I needed a big box for my library of memories, another box for my big moments because I still do chronological. And then I needed a box for my theme albums. And these were just a few of the theme albums. So kind of as a starting point, if it doesn't just pop into your head right away, you can always just take a minute and make some notes on how you want to kind of group your photos. And let me just say hi to everybody who's come in. Hi, hi, hi. Cheryl's from Virginia. Sheila. Okay, we've got Deborah. And have I said, oh, I think I've said hello to you guys. Joanne, Anne, Sherry, Cindy. Howdy, Cindy. Cherie at Sherry Lynn's Farm Girl. Okay. Wow. Southeast Georgia. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Thanks for saying hello. So I'm going to just kind of zoom my camera over here and I'm, I'm really trying to keep it steady for you. Okay. So if you look over here and please, uh, this is my work in progress. So I'm just showing you what it's like to be in the photo trenches, right? So I'm gonna move my chair. So over here, sometimes people have been asking, what is that cart? That cart is from Michael's. Um, oh gosh, what's it called? I think the Essex cart, E-S-S-E-X. -S -S -E and um, make sure you get it with a coupon and you can just get that cart. And what's really fun about this cart, not only does it roll around, okay, which is really nice, but if you can see, it actually fits three power sort boxes on the top shelf, and then it would fit three power sort boxes on the bottom shelf. So once I'm done with my six foot table, that's kind of where I wanna just store my, my boxes as I scrapbook, okay? I'm still dealing with some backlog here. So that is the Essex cart. And then I just have, you could also put a printer on it, and I have my printer paper in the drawers underneath. So, if we look at this cart though, let's see, I'm gonna try to get over here. Do you see I have my library of memories? Okay, right here, I have this big box, which is my library of memories. I'm gonna just try to roll it over here because it might be a little easier. 
here we go. So I have my library memories. Now, okay, one thing is that I ran out of my small power sort boxes, but from long ago, I had my giant power sort boxes. And so if you have these, you know, definitely pull them out. You can use them. They are really the same thing. So the, the giant power sort boxes are two of the smaller power sort boxes kind of in one box. They are really a, a beast. They're kind of heavy. So it, it's, it would be kind of nice just to have all the smaller ones. But anyhow, I was using what I had, which is really good. So use what you have, right? So this is now my library of memories. So I have my whole things we do, all of my photo folders. If you are not familiar with photo folders, go to my website, craftsomejoy.com and download them because this is definitely part of what you need. Let me just, hopefully my head was not in the way there, but you need a whole stack of photo folders so that you have these handy, and I'm gonna show you how I use those. You probably have, you know, a lot of you have already done this part, but <clears throat> this is really important to have a whole stack of those on hand. So the photo folders, that's how I categorize everything. Here's library of memories. It's things we do, places we go, people we love, and all about us. Now, what has been so exciting, I was chatting with um, my friend Lynn, who you guys know from my pop uh, Facebook group, and I was telling her what's really exciting is when you get into some of these old photographs and get into, I'm gonna pan over here. So I was working on some of these boxes that were like 1990, 1991, 92, 93, 94, 95, all different years and kind of coming back to um, my uh, different areas, different groups. My library of memories now has just blown up with that beautiful kind of transition through years of photographs. Like now I can start looking at some of these um, folders and I'm starting to see how all of these different years are gonna co-mingle into a category. And I'm super excited about scrapbooking that because that's the whole beauty of library memories, right? Is to be able to take a look over time and create um, create an album that's really meaningful and that tells a story. So when I was um, getting through some of these photographs, the other thing that I realized, and if you remember, you can keep a list in your pop planner, the library of memories, you can keep a list of what you think those categories are gonna be for you but I have to say, I didn't think of everything that I started making categories for until I started looking at some of these older pictures. So what I ended up doing is I realized, okay, so art for us is a really big category because I have, I'll just show you. So I have a, a folder here of my kids when they, you know, sidewalk chalk, making art. And this is my oldest when she was in parent ed class making art. So now see how I'm going to be able to see over time how all these wonderful pictures are gonna kind of come together. So as you're digging through, the exciting part is now, instead of just this huge chronological mismatch of photos, now what you've got is a chance to categorize those photos into meaningful categories. And I'm super, super, super excited. There's Lynn, hi Lynn. I was just talking about you. <laughs> Lynn is here, okay. Pat, hi Pat, Debbie. And yes, thanks all, all you guys for coming on. Okay, so now I realize, okay, I needed a category for art. So as you go through and start looking at your photographs, you're going to see these themes pop out at you and you're going to go, oh, I didn't even realize I, we do that thing that 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 thing is. And um, oh, here's another one. I didn't even think about it. But if you guys have kids, 
you might think I have, so now I have a bugs file because we, um, I remember photos now start popping into my head of, this is when we had the, the caterpillars. I'm, you know, that was, and then they turned into a butterfly, right? And we had the shoe box, you guys, you, you remember this? So now I can put these with other photographs of my kids playing with bugs because that was the thing that we did a lot in mud, in bugs. And uh, actually mud, uh, mud was another one that came up. I started remembering that, let me find mud. Um, that was a big theme, mud and dirt, okay? <laughs> So that's going to be a fun category, right? As I start getting into photographs of them at different parts of their life when they're playing in dirt. And I don't know about you, but I have a lot of photos of my kids in mud and dirt because that was just a great pastime for them when they were growing up is just playing with water, playing with mud and just getting dirty. And um, so that's another category. So I hope that's making sense. So, you know, what was really exciting was to start getting into all these photographs and then realizing how wonderful it is to see these categories come alive over time. Hi, Debbie. Hi, welcome, welcome. Do I have a tutorial on making the folders? Ah, there is a video. It's um, called a Photo Organization, and it's on my YouTube channel, and it goes through how to make the folders. And there's a link to download it there, too. So definitely a, a game changer when you can make these folders, and then you just have that ability to kind of flip through and see exactly what you need. So another thing that I realized that happened, I'm going to see if I can pull this a little closer for you guys to see, is um, as we were, as I was going through photos, I realized, you know, kind of the first thing that popped into my head in the home category, which is in our places album, what were kind of, you know, our family homes as a family where we lived. But I didn't realize I I had a whole file of like my first house as a when I when I got out of college and went to work the house my first house where I lived and I came across some photos of this it was just this tiny little house and I I lived there with my roommate she was my college roommate and I came across these great photographs of that house and like even flowers that we had planted. There it is. There's that cute little house. That was my first house. Okay. I had totally forgotten about that. And now in the process, I go, I know exactly how I'm going to scrapbook these photos. Now, this was a part of my life. Um, you know, before I met my husband before and during, but it's definitely something that I want to put in our quote unquote library of memories because this is a memory and this was one of the places that was a home to me and so not only for me but um you know i i'm starting to come across photos of my husband's apartment he lived in apartments before we were married and um those are other things that can pop in there and you start to realize how this whole library is just kind of emerging and growing. And that was super, super exciting for me. And um, I was able to, you know, different. So, so part of what I think is really amazing when you get into this is, you, you know, you start with this group of photos. And before I was always so confused. I was like, I don't know how to scrapbook all these photos. And now everything after working through this process, I look, I can look at photos and I can go, I know where this needs to go now. I know that it's a person that we love. I know that's part of my Tennessee family or that's my grandmother or those are my cousins or that's John, my husband's family. And so now I have a place to drop all of those photos and it makes the world, the world of difference. So that's kind of the 
um, library of memories idea. So, you know, getting into places you go, I started finding, oh, I had forgotten way back when my husband and I were first married, we took a lot of trips to Las Vegas because we're not too far from Las Vegas. I had totally forgotten about that. So now I can start taking all of my Las Vegas trips and we went with some friends a few times. Now I can have that as a place as we go um, part of my library of memories. So it's really, really fun to not only think of, um, you know, the obvious places like Disneyland or, or theme parks, but then really when you get into your photographs, also start categorizing smaller trips and looking at those. And it's just such a rich experience to get in there and go through all of this again. So that's the library of memories. Does, does anybody have questions about that? Hi, Patty. You're, thanks for joining, Debbie. You're here. Okay, yes, Debbie, we saw you. So this is this is um, Library of Memories, and I, you know, I go over this a lot more in my pop series, but I just kind of wanted to share a little bit more now that I've kind of been in it and and organizing more how that has been evolving and growing, and it's super here. Sorry about that, guys. That was. Um, are we still going? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so many school calls. Okay. So um, <clears throat> let's see. Theme albums. Okay. So that's library memories. I have two other categories that I make albums for. One is theme albums. And then I'm going to move this out of the way so we can talk a little bit about my big moments also. <clears throat> so ooh, here we go. My big moments. Sorry. I hope I didn't shake you up too much. So here's big moments. I've shown this one before. Super, super easy to do big moments. This is chronological. So these are the albums that I have on backlog a lot. I know I'm in it with you guys. I am not perfect. So hi, Sandra. <laughs> Welcome. I am here with you guys doing this process with you. So this is my backlog. This is what I'm getting into and organizing. So this is definitely digital. And I do want to kind of take a minute here and talk a little bit about printed and digital because printed photographs are so, so much easier because you just, you, you've got them, you've got your photos already printed, you've probably made doubles or triples or whatever, and you've scrapbooked some and then you've got your, the ones that are left, maybe something like that. And then you, um, it's kind of like a known commodity, right? You know what you have. And there's no more out there on Facebook or a friend has or whatever. It's like, here's your known commodity of printed photographs. Then you have digital. So anything in this box, these years, this is all digital. So that also goes into that same kind of categorization where now I know if I want to work on a chronological year, a big moment, again, kind of going back to the pop planner, We've got that categorized in the big moments tab, right? So I know what the big moments are for my year and I can go digitally. I can go in and look at those years. Now, this is going to work also for printed photographs, but uh, right now, the way I'm showing my big moments box, these are definitely all going to be digital photographs that I need to print or possibly that I have already printed. And those will be kind of repetitive. So in 2008, the big moments, they, they're going to look very similar to 2009 to 2010 and so on and so forth. The big moments really are kind of similar that way. <clears throat> oh, you guys were on Facebook. Oh my goodness. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nope. We're on YouTube today. I know I'm popping all over the place. Yesterday I was on, on Facebook. So, um, but you can always check that out. I have some new product to show you on Facebook. Okay. So that's a little bit about big moments. Let's talk now about theme albums. I'm going to kind of push you guys over this way a little bit more. Pee. All right. 
And um, also kind of just a little, I'm going to back backtrack just a little bit. So I, I just want to talk for a second about what I have and, you know, kind of a setup. Um, uh, Donna was telling me, you know, she has in our pop group, she has the same kind of a, a setup on her dining room table. So wherever you can kind of carve out some space, I think it's really important that you kind of have the space, first of all, if you're going to do a lot of photo sorting and um, a place that you can kind of leave up at least for a couple weeks so you can really get into it and make some progress on that. So um, on my on my table, you're going to need some pencils, of course, and a photo labeling pencil is super, super important to have. This is a Stabilo pencil. This one is from Creative Memories, but it just has to be a soft Stabilo pencil because when you're writing the date on the back of a photograph, like this is 1990, you don't want that. First of all, it doesn't rub off. It's not a Sharpie. Sharpies are not good for photographs because of the chemicals in it. And it's not going to indent your photograph. So you just want a soft Stabilo pencil so that you can easily write on the back of your photographs when you're sorting. I have my favorite sharpener. It's a black wing. And then um, post-its, you want an eraser, you want your notepads and your folders. So super important. Have all of this handy and ready. If you want to include your little label maker, <laughs> grab your label maker too. And, um, you know, just be ready. Have everything that you need right where you need it. And you definitely, definitely need your pop planner right here, ready to go. Underneath my table, okay, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you. Here's something I challenge you guys all with. Can you see it? Let me see if I can push you down. Do you see that? I hope you can see that. <laughs> this is my trash can. You guys, look at all the photographs I have in my trash can. That's a lot of photographs. And I challenge you to toss toss those photos. And remember, I've talked about that. I've talked about your ABC photos. Okay, I'm going to scoot you back in here. So have your trash can super handy because once you make a decision, stick with it and do it and keep it. So you're going to have your, this is for printed photos. You're going to have your A photos, your B photos, and your C photos. Your A photos are album worthy. Your B photos are ones that you want to archive. And your C photos are going to go right down there in that trash can, right under your table. Toss, 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 toss. Get rid of them. If you don't, if they're, especially for a printed photograph, if they're, if they're bad or they're just, you have five of the same shot, pick the best shot and throw them away. Or... Or the other part of this, super important to have, and that's what I have kind of just in my little um, photo box right here. I have a pod that I have for friends that I want to give away, family that I want to give away, and different people, just little folders that I want to give. Look at all the photos I have in here that I want to give away. And that's going to be really fun for somebody else to see. And then if they don't want them, okay, that's fine. They can toss them, but have this ready. Like know when you touch something, know where it's going to go. Is it going to go? Is it an A photo? Is it going to go and get sorted? Is it a B photo? It's going to go into the archive box. I'll talk about this archive box in just a sec. Is it going to get given away or is it going to go in the trash can? really important to have everything kind of right in your reach, right where you can touch it, so to speak. Okay, so because I mentioned archive, I'm gonna kind of scroll up here and show you. So right here, I have my archive box. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about this. Hi, hi, 
welcome. Nobody's late. You can always watch this too. <laughs> um, I'm going to have this posted under the pop video series. So, because really, I, I think it's important to kind of see the whole process, see somebody working on it. I, I think it's really important to kind of see that. So here's my photo folders. I showed you that. Here's my archive box. So now, now the only way a photo is going to get into my archive is like when I said, it's a B photo. Okay. When it's just not something I'm going to scrapbook, but it's not something I really want to toss away either. It's a good photo and there might be a chance to use that, but keep in mind I'm not putting photos in here that I want to scrapbook in my library of memories. Those are over in the library of memories box. This is really just B photos and photos that um, are, I, I just want to keep, I don't want to toss them out. Okay, so you'll notice then I started, here's how it works. <laughs> I had a box like this the entire box was the year 2000, okay? The entire box was my 2000 photographs. I have gone through the entire box of photographs and now the only archive, I have two pods now. These two pods are my, whoops, let me grab them. These are now all I have left from 2000 to archive, that's it. Okay, everything else has been categorized either into my kids' albums, okay, and I'm gonna get to that, or into my library of memories, or into a big moments category. Actually, I've already scrapbooked 2000 um, chronologically, so there's no big moments for that. So really, it's just my backlog my kids' books, and anything that I pulled from here that was something that would represent a category in Library of Memories, okay? So that's, to me, exciting. I got rid of this entire box. I threw a bunch of stuff away. I categorized into my kids' folders, into my Library of Memories, and then that's all I had left, okay? So that's really taking that bulk of pictures and getting rid of them, you know, really touching them, sorting them, deciding how you're going to make your albums. Okay, now a big question I often get is, what about those pesky, pesky little things called negatives, right? What do we do with those? And I talked a little bit about this <clears throat> in a couple other formats, but I'm just going to share what I'm doing at the moment. And, um, you know, technology always, always changes, but I'm just going to share what I'm doing at the moment. So where, where I am, if you, you know, I have a lot of photos here, right? My process is as I'm going through these pods like this, this is a packet of negatives. All right. But I've already printed all the photos. So I, I just don't have the time or the ambition to scan all these photos right now. Okay, that's, I'm just being honest. I don't have the, the time or the ambition to do that. Um, but I'm not getting rid of them. And I also don't have the time to take every negative out of here and slide it into a sleeve. I would only do that if it was a very important roll of film. So what am I doing? Well, I'm kind of taking <clears throat> Stacy Julian's idea that all you need to do is have your negatives in a place. So if something happened to your original photographs or something happened to one of your albums that you have the backup. So this is kind of like my cloud storage for negatives. Okay. This is, this is my storage system. So what I've done is I got the absolute biggest notebook I could find off of Amazon and I'll have this linked for you guys so you can find it too. <clears throat> and then what I did is I ordered some sleeves 
and some CD sleeves because as we got, you know, more into the process, then a lot of things got uh, downloaded onto negative, um, onto CDs. So I ordered two kinds of inserts. And then sometimes we got negatives back like this. You guys remember this from Target or from, you know, different developers where the negatives are right here. And then those were already three hole punched. So I just shoved all those right here um, into my notebook. So the idea is everything is safe. If I needed them, I could go through and find and organize. They are roughly categorized into years. And that's all I'm doing. So those negative sleeves, I'm not even taking them out of the envelopes. I just don't have time. I just don't have the energy to do that. I have so much other stuff. And besides, I want a scrapbook. That's way more fun. So I'm just taking these, putting them roughly into years, and then this whole, and, and I'm, I'm ready. You can see I'm ready for a new notebook. So then this whole thing zips up. Okay, you can see that. It's got a zipper. And then it's got a handle. I hope you can see that too. Let me see. See the handle right there. And then this would just be somewhere, kept somewhere. Best scenario would be that this would be kept not in the same place as, not in our house. Not in the same place that if we had a disaster at our house, that this would also be part of that. So it could be a husband's office or a friend's office or a family member's house. Maybe they lived, you know, somewhere else away from you. But the idea is to keep these someplace safe, okay, and not with your normal stash. So like we are actually in a high fire zone. So once I get all of my photo, my negatives into, you know, kind of one place, then, um, I'm, we're probably going to take this up to my parents' house when we can travel again, uh, my husband's parents' house, when we can travel again and just say, hey, can you just store these up there? Um, <clears throat> it's just a couple. It'd probably be two of these uh, binders full. So that is the idea. So the pages, this is just a big two-pocket sleeve, okay? And then I take like I was showing you, I just take and slip um, my negatives. This is what I had done years and years ago, how I used to organize. I just staple an index card on it. But, you know, however it is, if you want to just write on the envelope what it is, and then I just slip those in there, you can see they fit, and then those go right into the notebook. So you, you just need like a big pocket page, and then the... Um, the CD ones, let me kind of flip down here. These CD ones, so these are really awesome because they are front and back. So each page holds eight CDs. And um, this was the Vaults brand, V-A-U-L-T-Z. So they look like this and they are three ring punched. And they do fit. This is such a giant notebook. They do fit in here and I can still zip it up. So yeah, there's the Vaults brand, okay? So that is what I chose. And they're not, you know what? These are not super duper quality by any means, but hey, it holds everything. It holds it in one place. And that is my whole idea for tackling negatives because now you can see over here with my archive I don't have any of the negatives kind of in there now I know if I need a negative it's going to be in this book okay so any questions on that a good photo printer ah, I have a video for that <laughs> okay here's something funny though you guys my absolute favorite printer is the Canon Crafters All-in-One, and it's actually sitting right over there on my workspace. And I love that printer, and that's where I print. I, my, my favorite still is printing at home. But here's the thing. I have just been told. I've been told by um, 
oh, I'd say at least 15 people have ordered that printer. And it's not just the printer, it's also you need Red River paper, the absolute best photo paper you can find. Red River, and there's links everywhere on my um, website, but that printer is now sold out, I was told, until August, I think, is when it's coming back in. So it's a little tricky, but I think people are catching on as to how amazing that printer is. And um, the great thing, you know, I haven't even talked a lot about that printer, but the great thing is it's a scanner too, okay? It scans beautifully. I ended up ordering a um, personalized cover through Creative Memories and I scanned my wedding photo and it was, it's beautiful. I mean, you can go 3200 DPI in there. It's, it's an amazing, um, it prints 12 by 12, it prints four by six and love that printer. Okay, so check it out, uh, Canon Crafters printer. All right, so any other questions? Yes, it goes through my entire printing process. Yes, thank you, thank you, Lynn, because I'm, I'm picky. I love my photographs. If you're gonna spend all the time to scrapbook them, my goodness, you want them to be good photos, right? So, <clears throat> let me just, these are, actually you can see these are some photos that I printed. And sometimes I will print uh, four by four and um, just print those, but the quality. And this is that paper, the Red River paper. Absolutely amazing. It's a luster, ultra pro luster. Amazing quality. Okay, so that's a little bit about that. Okay, any other questions? Um, there are some great photo services. I'll just go off track a little bit. There are some great photo services as well but I think it's important to um, also kind of know what all the different features are. So if you need to print a whole lot, you can print even Creative Memories or Forever are my two favorites for printing online. Um, and then after that would probably be Mpix and Persnickety, but I've, you know, eh, printing at home, I have to say, I love it. I love it for the, the workflow of it as well. Okay, so. How do I go about getting into categorizing? So here's a bunch of photos, okay? And before, I would just look at them and go, I, I just don't even know how I'm going to deal with all these photos. So I'm going to just kind of take you through the process as I'm, I haven't even looked at these, so I hope they're not too embarrassing. Anyhow, um, but so that way we can kind of take a look and, and go, oh, this is, the decision-making process, okay? So first of all, the reason I have one of these Polaroids right up front is, I was just talking about the, the printer I have. So I have, I don't want that to fall over. It's just gonna fall over, isn't it? I have um, a box with photos that I just need to scan, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, I would take this photo, this is in, uh, this is a 1990s box. What? I think it's 90, 90, 91. Uh, yeah. Okay. This looks like, okay, this was 90, 1990. So I'm going to take this and then I'm going to write on the back of this 1990 with my Stabilo pencil, with my photo labeling pencil. Then I'm gonna take these because I have a whole box of like Polaroids and different things that I need to scan. And then I'm gonna, just gonna take a time when I can sit down and individually scan these um, Polaroids. Now they have a wonderful, Epson has a wonderful scanning uh, print uh, scanner, photo scanner that I'm also looking into, and I'm, I'm actually looking into the negative scanner too, so I, I'll have an update on that as well, um, just for some of them. But 
this I'm just kind of keeping as a, a side box, you know, so if you have things that you're like, I, I want to scan that, like this one is a great one. It has my mom in here and I just don't want to lose that photo, but I need it digitized and I need to be able to print that better than just a Polaroid. Okay. So I have that as one thing, uh, just a box that I also keep. So I keep those, a box with you know, all the photos I want to give away. And then I have the box where things I need to scan. And then I also have, of course, my negatives and all those end up where I just showed you in that big notebook. Ah, memorabilia. Yes. Okay. Shoot. That is upstairs. Darn. Hmm. Okay, I have one of my pop videos. I actually go through how I store my memorabilia, but I'm actually going to get into that a little bit more um, in, a, in another episode. But what I want to just kind of show you, um, I don't store it. Well, some I do store with my photos. If it's small enough, I store my memorabilia kind of in the folder with it. If it's large... One second. <clears throat> okay. You guys know, if you've seen, if you go and you've seen any of my paper organization videos, this is the brand I use. It's Checkout Store brand, and it's these 12 by 12 pockets. So for my memorabilia, what I ended up doing is I took a pocket like this. This is a 12 by 12 outer record sleeve. And the, the reason is because sometimes we have memorabilia that is, um, you know, like maps and different things like that. And so, um, or, you know, large portraits and, and those kind of things. And so what I ended up doing is getting these folders and then I would just slip in a piece of um, 12 by 12 cardstock one second up oh, here that is okay and then I would write on the cardstock the year so I store my memorabilia um, two ways by year for all of the family stuff and and all of that uh, and trips and themes still are by year. And then I also store memorabilia for my kids. Hi, thank you for joining Emma. Welcome. Okay, so yeah, there's one video I kind of store. I kind of talked a little bit. I have a picture of how I have my memorabilia stored. Okay, so. You guys see that? So it's the 12 by 12. This is the same sleeve that I use to organize all my smaller paper packs. And I put the Avery tab on that side. It's the same sleeve. So what I do is I stick a piece of cardstock in here and then I actually use my little label maker because I love that. And I put the year. And then I store this in the way I have it actually. Let me grab one more thing. <clears throat> and you can find something that's similar or if you have access to the creative memories products this is what i use the storage and display tote because this is bigger than a 12 by 12 so you can see how then i would line all of these up and i wish i i'm working on them upstairs. <laughs> so I wish I could just grab it and show you, but um, I'm just gonna kind of sh sh talk it through. So then these are all lined up and stored inside the tote by year. So that's how I have my memorabilia. So then if we go, like if I come across a map or a, a, a brochure, um, a concert, brochure or you know anything like that that all just gets slipped right in um, if it's a large photograph it gets slipped in and then what you want to do 
is if you have this, because it's not stored, of course, in, in these smaller boxes, you'll want to take um, your photo folder and make a note on the front that you have um, a map or whatever it is uh, in your memorabilia box. Okay, and so this is how you cross-reference. You put it on your photo folder that you have it in this big file because you have to know the cross-referencing. You have to know once you take this to go scrapbook, you have to have that note on there to remind you, oh yeah, I have to go pull this. And so typically what I'll do then is when I'm ready to scrapbook is I'll grab my photo folders and I'll just grab the, the pocket with all the memorabilia in it to work on alongside of my folders. Scanning negatives is very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it is it is difficult. I'm still kind of, the jury's out <laughs> on scanning negatives. I think, you know, I'm just ready. I know there's a lot of services out there that do it and um, I, I've been doing a lot of research on scanning negatives and um, I haven't just jumped the gun and purchased anything yet, but I will definitely update you when that happens. So that's, that's again how I like to um, store my memorabilia. That um, tote is awesome and it zips up. Okay, the other great thing, so before I used to have my folders in just kind of an open basket and I realized uh, there's a lot of dust <laughs> that can get in there. And um, unfortunately, we, we also, well, for, we have a rabbit and he loves paper. So <laughs> I need something that zips up. And so he can't get to that. So, you know, cause I'm, I'm having my kids, the reason they're upstairs, I'm having my kids go through and help me organize all of their schoolwork because it got kind of, roughly organized, but there's some detail organization that needs to happen with my kids. And I highly, highly recommend getting, especially now that everybody's at home, I highly recommend, um, yeah, rabbits, um, that you get your family involved in helping you organize, you know, memorabilia or think about trips um, and do all that fun stuff because you know, three, four, five memories are way better than one memory, right? And and especially if you haven't um, written all those things down, you don't have a record. It's just so great. Now that everybody's kind of home, you can just get that info. So, okay, so that's how I do my memorabilia. Um, and I'll see, you know what I'll try to do? I'll, I'll try to put a, po a couple posts up, uh, probably on my Instagram if you haven't found me on Instagram. It's craft.some.joy. And I'll post some pictures of how I have my memorabilia stored. So uh, you can check that out there. Um, and then my kids, as I mentioned, it's the same kind of thing. Um, but of course, that goes by schoolwork and goes by year. And then it goes into their school albums. And I've got several videos that show uh, you know, my kids' school books and how I use the memorabilia right in their school books. Okay, so great questions. Thank you. Let me know if you have anything else that um, comes to mind. Okay, so now we've got this whole stack of photos. So what do we do with it? And um, this gives me an idea when I went through, you know, this is kind of from my, my big archive box back here in the corner. It's from 1990 through 94, and I'm just working through it, going through all these photos. And now I get to start making decisions about where these are gonna go. And just like I was mentioning before, sorry, you know what, I think this is just making too much noise. Let me take this bracelet off. Um, just as I was mentioning before, now that I've started this process, I'm starting to see themes come out as to um, where some of these are going to go. Okay, perfect example. This was one of my pets. Okay, it's just sitting in here. It's just this miscellaneous photograph of my dog. 
Well, now I know exactly where to put that because I have, this is my theme album box. And I think I'm, I showed you in the very beginning, I've got different theme albums that I'm working on. Now my kids, I also, you know, they have their own albums as well. But I have Christmas, I have a book that's just my husband and I, and I have a pets book, and then I have my vacations. So here, right here, this whole back section is paw prints on our heart. And these are all the different pets we've had over the years. And this is Susie. So I have a file right here for Susie. And so Susie now, I, and if I want, actually first, since I know this is 1990, what I'm gonna do is just write that on the back really quickly in case I wanna know what year it is. But again, with library memories, you don't have to know because now I'm just having a collection of my dog Susie, of my dog Misha, these were all, um, you know, different, different. I mean, you can see, look at over the years, you get to see all the different pictures. This was when she was a little, when I first brought her home. So cute, you know, and then just different pictures as she got older. And, um, you know, and then I get to take all this and make a wonderful tribute to her. Okay, so... Again, just having a place to put it all is so important. Let me just fix those a little bit so I can pop that in there. Okay, so now you can just see, bam, right off the bat. I know where to put that. I have a place. I can touch it one time and it gets into the place where it needs to go. So that's why I think it's really important. I know, you know, I'm kind of scanning again my whole table set up, but I have my my cart over here and then I have my um, my negatives and then I have all this whole setup so that everything's you know within reach I think that's important to when you sit down to work that everything's just ready ready to go oh I should also just while I've got my theme box out here let me put you guys down right here so another fun thing um, that I realized when I was going through some of these photos, and I, I've kind of skipped around those miscellaneous years. Again, themes pop out, right? My, this is my theme album, and part of themes is vacations. Vacation is a theme album because I want to take those photographs. And I found some amazing pictures of two trips to Hawaii. One was to Maui, one was to the Big Island, that my husband and I took with his parents, and I've never even scrapbooked these photos. Look at all those photos. I have them now ready to go, two different trips ready to go, and I can't give um, too much away, but the June release product is really exciting, and I cannot wait to use these photos. So um, I'm not going to say anything more, but it's coming, some great things are coming. So now I have those ready to go, those trips ready here. I'm also realizing, okay, I had other trips that I took by myself. So again, now I might start looking at this as this was before I was married. And now this might be another, even just another album. You know, I'm kind of thinking, what about all those business trips that I took? Maybe those are gonna be called Lauren's Travels, you know, the, the before we were married. This was kind of, you know, when we were dating and after we were married trips. Well, what about all those fun trips or the trips you take with girlfriends or friends or, you know, family and different members? Maybe those, you start thinking about those in a different way and you can make an album for that. Okay, let's see, how do you handle picture that might be? Ah, two separate categories, yes. Good question. <clears throat> okay, so I've handled that in a couple ways. So you look at a photo and you go, this is a great photo. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna bring this right back out because, <clears throat> here, this is a photograph. 
This one is my husband and I. Yeah, June release. Yep. Zip, zip. I can't say anything more. Um, yeah, uh, my husband and I at Disneyland. So um, this, I thought it's, it's, we don't have a whole lot of photos of the two of us, especially after we had kids. It's always the kids, kids, kids. So for me, this was an important photo to be not only in our Disneyland, because this was a Disneyland trip, so that will go on the Disneyland page in places we go, but it also needs to go in my Lauren and John album. So fortunately, I had two of these printed. Okay, so if you have two printed, no problem. If you don't have two printed, you know, you can do a few things. You can scan it. If it's a film photo, you can scan it. Or you can just write a note on a piece of paper and tuck it in and say, you know, from uh, this one was 05, 2005, uh, you know, go print that photo and uh, or scan it or that you need to get it. And so then you can just tuck that note in the folder. Okay, does that, I hope that makes sense. So, so now this one um, lives two places. And you know what? I really don't mind that I have that in two places that I might actually scrapbook that picture twice. That does not bug me at all because the story that I tell with my husband and I, okay, as we have photos of us through the years, different photos all through the years, that's a very different story to tell than a little trip we took to Disneyland with the kids. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Let me check in. Thank you, Sheila. I'll see you soon. Okay, um, system for showing you have scanned a photo. Hmm. <clears throat> no, but that's a good question. How would I show that? You know, you could write on the back with your photo labeling pencil that you've scanned it. Um, let's see. I don't, I, that's a good question. I probably, you probably need to write it down somewhere in a pop tracker in your pop planner that, you know, maybe that's part of the digital organization. Hmm. Actually, I think probably the best place would be if I had, this is actually, now that I'm looking at the back of it, it is a digital photograph because it has a file number. And, but if it wasn't, if it was a film photograph, I would probably put on the back in photo labeling pencil that I've scanned it. So that would probably uh, take care of that. So yeah, that's a good question. Okay, if anybody else has a better solution, let me know let me know about that. Okay, so now you know where I would put this. I would grab one of those sleeves because I'm not dealing with negatives and I'm just going to slip it right in here and tuck that into my notebook. Okay, so that's where that's going to go. And then I've got um, some trip photos. Okay, so this was a trip uh, my husband and I took up to Napa Valley. Okay, so now I have all these photos and before, so here's the great thing about photo folders, right? And this again is, is kind of high level sorting. When you get into, I think when you get into your digital photographs, you get into kind of a much more refined level of sorting because you're, you're picking the photos that you want to print, right? So you're picking, um, let me see, we're going to go back to John's birthday. You're picking the photos that you want to print. So I use the photo folders in a situation like this where I can go, okay, yes, I need photos. You know, I'm doing a two page spread. I need enough photos to have that event in a two page spread. But I also use photo folders where I just grab that folder and, oh, here they are, my, my empty folder. 
right, without anything written on them, where I can take a whole stack of photos. And the first pass, I might go through, and if there's some duds, I'll throw some of those duds away. Like, you know, I probably don't need those fish in there. That one's probably better than that. And toss, okay? So there, it goes in the trash can. And if, if there's obvious bad photographs, those are gonna go. But I don't spend my time at this point in the process getting into what my pages are going to look like. Okay, does that make does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So I'm this is a rough um, sort where I'm going to take all these photographs and now I've I've looked at them and I've put them all together and I know that now this pocket this photo folder is going to be Napa. And this is 1990, okay? And actually, I do know I have memorabilia for this because we took a hot air balloon ride. And so I have like our certificate for going up in the balloon and all that kind of stuff. So I would go in and grab that memorabilia in order to make these pages, okay? So that's how I kind of, when I've got a stack of photos that I'm going through, I'm, I'm doing a rough sort. I'm doing... I'm throwing away ones that are obviously not going to make it, but I'm also going to just kind of roughly sort these. And then now this is going to go into my little photo pod here, okay, for 1990. And you can see I do have like a few cards and things that were memorabilia that can kind of fit in here. I could put this in those larger pockets later, but right now I just have them tucked in because they're small enough to fit. Okay, so that's how I kind of do that rough sort. Now, I, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about um, what you do because now you have a rough sort, right? Now you've got a rough sort. And so you've gone through and, and let me, okay, hold on, before I do that. So I hope, you know, kind of dealing with this big stack of photos, I hope that's kind of making sense. So now, you're getting an idea, you can do a rough sort, you're gonna, these are actually more from that same trip. And then um, as you're going through, you kind of get to make decisions looking at the photos. Um, is this a trip? Is it um, uh, a photo that you want to, okay, here's another example. So this was, um, again, some of the first photo, this is actually one of the first photos of my husband and I, this was before we were married. So again, I'm looking at that photo now with the kind of that background knowledge, that perspective of saying, I'm making, I know that I'm, I'm collecting photos of John and I together. So this is one of those photos. This is a film photograph because it's 1990. So this is one of those photos that maybe I would scan and I would make sure that this goes into my Lauren and John folder. And the other thing that was happening here is this was John's birthday, but this was before we were married. So this wasn't really kind of a family thing, right? So you have to kind of keep that perspective and go, okay, so I can do a few things. I can put this in Lauren and John, and I can put this in John because that's a picture of him on his 30th birthday. And then I could be done. Well, there's also another category too. And I do have enough photos. I could probably drop these in both places. So the other thing is that we, um, here's another folder, another category. We actually met at work. And the place we worked, it was called DWP, Department of Water and Power. And um, that's where this photo was taken. This was his cube cubicle. So I, I might also want to drop one of these photos into a DWP folder. Okay. So that's the whole beauty of this process is kind of going through and saying, you can have it one place, you can have it two places, but the whole idea is to look at it and make a decision. So for me, my decision on this, what I would do, this is going into Lauren and John 
Okay, so that's dropping in there. Actually, I'm gonna see, I don't have the date on the back. So 1990, just writing that really quick, putting it in my folder, putting in my box, my Lauren and John box. One of these is going into DWP and that's dated already. And then this one's gonna go into John. And this is 1990. And so this is gonna, so I have not only Lauren and John, I also have a Lauren file and a John file. So that's going into John. Okay, so drop it right in there. So I hope that's making sense. Then you might come across, here's a photo of myself and this was one of my college roommates. Where's that gonna go? This is just a random photo, right? I don't, I don't know. This is gonna go in my library of memories into friends. Okay, so now I know I have a I have a place to put that. That's a friend. I have I have these miscellaneous photos now, my college friends, different friends throughout the years. And now I get to create a wonderful ex, you know story explaining that. So that's the great thing when you start really digging in is uh kind of realizing ah now I know where to put all this. Okay. So So would I organize photos date wise? I do organize chronologically for my big moments, but when I organize through library of memories, that is not chronological. It does not have to be chronological. Okay, so, oh, hi, Donna, welcome. Okay, you were talking about heritage. Um, a label on the sleeve and scanned. Okay, excellent. There's a, a great tip. Uh, you put them in a acid-free photo sleeve and put a label on the sleeve that you've scanned it. And uh, Donna uh, uses Forever for photo storage. That's an excellent company. If you want to store your your uh, digital archive, you can um, find out about uh, forever. Hi, Penny. <laughs> okay. Welcome. Welcome. This will be up on my channel. So don't feel like you've missed anything. Okay. Um, am I making an album for each of my folders in library of memories? Okay. So the library of memories has four albums and that is, that goes back to the categories for the library of memories. I'm gonna grab my box again. Whoops, oh, sorry, I just bonked you guys. Okay, um, so library memories goes into, hope you can see that. Let me see if I can put it over here. Things we do, okay, so all these photos are going into my library of memories and each section is going to have a title page in this album. So all of this is in one album. Places We Go, this is another album and inside Places We Go, I'm gonna have sections like the different houses we've lived in, the places we go, Las Vegas, Disneyland, all those different fun things. People We Love is a separate album. All the people we love will be in that album, grandparents, Cousins, uh, friends, the fringe photo, that's my friend's photo uh, file right now. It's getting, I'm getting a lot of photos in there. All About Us is the fourth album. Okay, so all these, this is all about our family and all the family photos that we take. And what's been really fun is also seeing how these folders are growing with uh, pictures. I have one that's labeled with mom. So these are all different photos that I have over the years with my kids at different times. Okay, so it's just me and them together. And I'm loving seeing how that's progressing and changing and being able to let these percolate. Lynn and I talk a lot about that. <laughs> We let these pictures kind of percolate and and uh, you get to store them and look at them and uh, come back to them over time. And then you 
get to create the stories with those photos. So these are not chronological, okay? Again, something like this, not chronological. Okay, so I have this and then I also have one with mom and I have one with dad and that's just been really fun to see how we are changing, you know, how the kids, the, all the different pictures with my husband over the years and how that's changing through time, okay? So really fun to see that. That's the beauty of library of memories. Love it, okay. So where should I go back? Hold on guys, oh, lots of questions. Okay, so that's how I'm making my albums. I answer that question for my library of memories. And there's a little bit more detail on my in my pop series about library memories. So each one of these, again, they're gonna have a title page and then that's gonna um, be an album. And, and that's what I'm excited about too, just as a side note, I'm now I'm really feeling this process. And as soon as I get all of this ready, man, you know, we can start whipping out those pages and my albums are gonna come together and that's gonna be so fun to really just scrapbook and know that I have everything organized and, and I've looked at it all and I know how I'm gonna scrapbook that. Okay, Lori, I know, I wish I could pop over to everybody's house <laughs> and help them. And then you could pop over to my house and help me too. <laughs> okay. Um, Rachel, welcome. Okay, let's see. Let me go back. Um, my problem is I have incomplete albums, printed photos, digital prints in a dead computer. Ah, oh, where to start? Plus 20 years of not being organized. Okay, Deborah, you need to join my Progress on Projects Facebook group because you are not alone. You are not alone, right, everybody? We are, we are in this together. There's wonderful... Um, folks in there who are dealing with the very same issues and that's why I created that Facebook group is so that we can um, kind of help each other out and uh, I have incomplete albums too and the pop series is made for us right so when you go in one of the first things I have you do where is it is create an album tracker Okay, you guys have seen me flip through this a million times where you can start writing things down. If you feel overwhelmed, who's with me? The best place to start is to start writing it down and it makes you feel so much better. It makes you feel like you can do this. So these are all free downloads. These are my pop templates and you start by just writing down, this is an album tracker. So you start by writing down the year, writing down your album, and then it has a column right here, not started, in process, or complete, okay? And you get a handle. The first thing you do is you get a handle on where you are in this process. Because I can't tell you how many people have said, I started in 92, I started in 95, I started in 98, and then my family happened, and then digital photographs blew up, and then I put it all away, and now I have the time, I have the resources, I have the energy, whatever it is, and I want a scrapbook again, but I don't know where to start. You're not alone. We're all there, right? So first thing to do is write it down and get a handle on where you left off, Okay, where you left off, and then the next part is where you want to go. And that's the whole reason I created my video called How I Would Start Over as a Scrapbooker, because I was right there. I didn't know, I didn't want to continue making albums the way I had originally, which was chronological. I put everything in an album chronologically. And that just didn't make sense to me anymore. So I came up with kind of my pop planner, my pop system and how I went about reorganizing and how I'm gonna, how I am approaching my album projects. Okay, so that's the starting point. You know, there's a lot of help that you can get from the pop group. So I recommend that. Um, yes, okay, so we're all there, don't worry. Okay, Julie R. asked, 
how do you handle a picture that might go into two categories and you haven't decided where to use it yet? Okay, if you haven't decided, ooh, you know what? I think it's really important if you, okay, I have two answers to that question. Really try to make a decision, first of all. Really, really try to make a decision and say, okay, it's a pet and I have this pet, but it was at Christmas time. Where do I want to put it? Like I said, first thing, you could also put it two places. You could put it in pets and you can put it in Christmas. I don't have a problem. If it's a great picture, put it two different places. Because the other thing I want you guys to realize is that just because you drop a photograph in one of these folders does not mean it has to stay there, <laughs> okay? Really, you can change your mind. I'm changing my mind all the time. Okay, so you can change your mind, but one of my, my strong suggestions is I am learning in this process to kind of handle things one time. It's just like paperwork. And if you can kind of force yourself into that decision and say either, okay, I really want this two places. I'm gonna, I only have one photo, so I'm gonna drop it in one place and I'm just gonna make a note in the other place. And I put a little note. Oh, I have a great picture of my dog at Christmas and put it in the pets album. Okay, so if not, and I get this too, because this has happened to me in this process, I would have a little stash, okay? So let's just take this for example. I have these photos. This is, um, these are photos of John at the Arboretum. So this is when we were dating. So I can, let's just say I haven't made a decision. Does this go in John or does this go in Lauren and John, you know, kind of our dating years? Because that's one of the albums I have on my list that I want to make is kind of, uh, us all the way up until we got married uh, while we were dating. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I have it dated. Okay. And, and that's just quick. You can 90 and 1990. Okay. And then I might, because if you put it aside and you come back to it and you don't write the date, I'm not guaranteeing you're going to remember because I don't remember. <clears throat> that's just the way things are nowadays and you're going through so many photographs you think you're going to remember but write the date then you could just have a pile that maybe this is just your little percolate pile where you can say I'm not quite sure about my decision on that and so I'm just going to let that sit there and I'm going to think about it because sometimes what happens in the process is you start going through other photographs and then you realize exactly where these photos need to go. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm, I don't know if anybody else has had that happen, but I've had that happen several times where I'll be looking and I'll go, I just don't know where to put that photo. So I'll date it. I'll stick it over to the side and then I'll keep working because I think what's important is that you continue the flow, that you continue the process of sorting through your photographs because it's it's like the more you do, the more you get it. Does that make sense? You know, like the more you do, the more you're like, oh, right. Oh, there's another dog picture. Okay, I know exactly where that's going to go. Maybe I don't know where that goes right now. But, oh, there's Susie and Misha. I know this goes right in my pets. Okay, I can deal with that because I know where that goes. All right, so I'm just going to put it over there. This is is uh, me at work. So that's going to go in DWP. Okay. So, you know, like there are definitely decisions that are easier to make. That's, I guess what I want to say. There are decisions that are easier to make, make those, put the harder decisions off to the side and then come back, but you're going to have to deal with those. Okay. <laughs> so make that decision at some point. Okay. I hope that answered your question. Okay, um, categories, we did that, uh, yes. Yep, my pop series goes through everything I'm talking about, making a scrap, oh, for your newly found bio mom, awesome. 42 years in a single large book, yep. Mm-hmm, such a project, yeah. Um, you know, 
in a project like that, I would highly recommend Julie. Um, if you've got a, a huge project and, and it's actually a good segue, I'm gonna come in and talk a little bit more about that. Um, the, the biggest tip I have for you, if you haven't learned how to do a power layout system, I would do a power layout system. And uh, there, I, ooh, I talked about that in one of my videos. Uh, I think it's labeled, it says power layout system. I'm not, I can't, not coming to me right now. But a great way, okay, so this is the segue that I wanna kinda take you into now. So what, what we're gonna, I'm gonna kinda show you, this is, these are my kids' albums over here, okay? <clears throat> so each one of my kids has a box and if we go into my pot planner, and I'll come back, don't worry, I'm coming back to uh, <clears throat> the um, power layouts because this is all relevant here. So each one of my kids has a keeping track of form, okay? This is part of the pop system where I can look and see in the different years, what was happening and kind of the albums that I want to make. This is one pass at looking at my kids. So I'm going to just work on Adam. Okay. And this one, if you look, I've got his baby. That album is complete. His first year is complete. And then his too cute, I started it. And then three, like three, four, five, those, it's not started. So what that is telling me, and then you can look in and I, I actually, his kindergarten, I should mark that his kinder and first are complete, but his second is in process. Okay, so I already know that because I was just looking at that. So this gives me kind of an overview where I am with a particular child, or you could look at it as a project with a particular project. So if this was the, um, uh, you know, kind of uh, life, life at a glance project. So what I would do is roughly sort all the photos first, okay? <clears throat> so if it's a child, you want to kind of keep in, keep in mind what you've already done for them if you've already worked on some of their albums. That's what this is for. Then once you get this compilation, this again is a rough, sort. So I didn't take the time at this point as I was going through photos. You can see this huge stack right here. This is just by year. Okay. 2005, <clears throat> 2006, 2007. This is also, as soon as we start getting into these years, my printing goes way down, right? Because we have digital and uh, there's the sections above that I haven't gotten into, but these will go into 2004, three, two, so forth, until I get caught up into where I've organized photos. So anything that I haven't um, sorted that needs to go into my child's book, or if you're looking at a project, think of this as a project, you do the rough sort. Then, and, and the reason I'm saying to do a rough sort is because there's a lot of emotional and mental work that goes into sorting photographs. I think you guys would agree, right? There's a lot of work that goes into that. So for my kids, I just couldn't start making all the decisions about, is that a personality photo? Is that a all about Adam photo? Is that go, it does that go, is that a friend's? I even have a tab here. Is that a friend's? Is that um, school? Is that scouts? Is that whatever, whatever, you know, I have to kind of generally group as a, as a first pass and get everything kind of into one place. Then my goal is then to take these photographs and do power layouts. Now the power layouts, I'm going to grab the box. I'm, I know I've talked about them before. <coughs> So my goal then is, 
I'm going to have all these boxes put away, right? You know, I'll have this whole six foot table ready to do my power layout. And let me see if I can, I'm going to just try to move some things so that you can see this a little better. Oh, there goes my lid. <laughs> okay, here's my, this is my archive. I'm going to go over there. Okay. So, uh, this is my atom box. I'm going to put this over here. See if maybe that can give you a better idea. So this is Adam's power sort box, okay? And the way then you look at photographs is you take, these come with the box, these uh, layout guides, and each guide has kind of this little side um, cutout. And so I look at, this is a two page spread, okay? And you can see these are all just stacked up inside my box. You can see all these stacked up in here. But the idea behind power layouts is that you kind of spread all of these boards out. And as you have, now you have a condensed, right? You, you start because you have a condensed group of photos. That's really important. So you have everything you need here. Then from here, you organize your album. Does that make sense? So you organize your photos into a rough sort. And now I want to start making decisions about what's actually going to go into my album. And so again, I might take some of these photos and they might end up in the trash if I don't use them, or they might go back into archive. And that's entirely fine. And so then I start making decisions about what's gonna go on what pages. And so for a large project, like looking at um, a light, you know, 42 years, 45 years, whatever, this is how I would do it. Get a, get a large table, even if you don't have, you know, the power layout, it's the same idea. You can use post-it notes and do the same thing and just go page one, page two. Page three, page four, page five, page six, page six, and start categorizing. And you can just, you know, you can just group all these photos together on in an area on your table, or if you have the power layout box, like that. And then you start seeing, okay, which pages go together. And and you can also include memorabilia in here. This is a perfect because it's such a large size you get to include memorabilia. And then you get to see, oh, okay, this one actually is not in the right place because you can see these are Boy Scout pictures. So these two pages will go together, okay? So you're just loosely organizing now, but I always think of the power layout box as organizing your album. So you go from organizing your photos to organizing your album and you know what's gonna go on your pages. So that's the plan that I have once I've sorted through all of my photographs and I have um, decided what's gonna go in my kids' boxes, then it's gonna go into the power sort box. Now, there is a big question, of course, when you get into this process. I've got a lot of printed photographs, right? that are in here. And I've got a lot of printed photographs here. But like I said, when I get to these older years, we're talking digital. So that's where it's really important that your digital process mirrors your physical organizing process. And I hope that makes sense. So your digital organization, and I, I did a video on this, on how to get started thinking about how to organize your photos digitally. But the biggest learning lesson for me personally was that my digital file structure needed to be the same as my printed file structure. So just kind of keep that little nugget um, you know, I know we all have kind of different uh, formats for organizing. So however you organize, I work on a Mac, 
So I use photos, the photos app on the Mac, on the PC. It's very different than how you organize on a phone or on a iPad. It's the computer version and there's a lot of organizing features on that. So, um, but that is how I organize my digital photos. And so now when I get to those years that I know are digital, I'm gonna switch over and look at my digital organizational structure for Adam because I have it set up that way. And also what's great with digital organization is face recognition. Okay, so um, face recognition can really help you when you're trying to organize children and certain people into categories. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Your digital then follows your printed. Okay, so where are we? Uh, okay, we've got the pop, let's see. Okay, we're in this together. Where am I? Uh, yeah, I hope that answered the question. Okay, so definitely there's always, always some more detailed information in my pop series. Um, let's see. Yes, how do we get the pop series printouts? Um, yes, okay, so that's all there. Uh, you can find all my pop printouts on my website at craftsomejoy.com. And yes, there's the template for the photo folders there. Also, I should mention, because I get so many requests on, um, you know, the things that I find and, uh, you know, where do you, where do you get that pencil? People actually ask where I get my pencil or where do I get my sharpener? I have a page on my website with all my favorite things. And I just have the Amazon links there. So if you are ever interested in something that you see in one of my videos and you wonder where I got it, you can always check out that page. And that's the same for like my notebook and uh, where I'm storing my negatives. I'll have all of that link so that you don't have to kind of click from video to video to video because it gets kind of cumbersome to do that. It's all there on one page and it's all categorized. So everything I use for my pot planner is in one section and everything I use for craft room organization is in another section. So just so you guys know, that's all there for you on my, um, under my shop button on my website. Okay, so if you don't print your digital photos and when you decide which section to put it in, do I make a file folder for it anyway? Yes, yes. So you, <clears throat> so I might, that, that goes back to my big moments, okay? So I might have, let's see, I probably have in here, yep, I have empty folders right here, empty folders. So actually this is a good, good thing to notice. So in 2008, you could see I just erased that. Definitely use pencil. We've brought that up before. Use pencil because these folders take time to make and you wanna just be able to reuse them and use them over again. So I actually got these photos, 2008 Adam's birthday into my album. So now I took that empty folder and I moved it to 2009. And so that's just gonna be there, the empty folder waiting for those photographs. And I did the same thing for Library of Memories, even when I thought it was gonna be a category that I might be using, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, um, what would that be? Uh, places we go, Disneyland. Like I know we have Disneyland pictures, but I hadn't come across Disneyland pictures or I hadn't printed Disneyland pictures. I would definitely, have a little folder that says Disneyland and have it waiting. So I do, I do use empty folders because that's just another kind of reminder for you. And then when you print them, bam, they go right in the folder. Good questions. Okay, I'm gonna grab a drink right here. Let's see what else we've got. <clears throat> Get the template, mm-hmm. Okay. 
Yes, and thank you, Lynn, for bringing up the timeline. The timeline's really, really important. Yes, so the timeline is going to help you. Timelines really help with power layouts, right? I mean, that kind of goes hand in hand too. So thank you for sharing that. This is the timeline tracker and you print this on eight and a half by 11 paper and then you just put this as a kind of a timeline and you can print several of these so that you have this go on and on. And your dates go down one side and then kind of the albums that you want to make and then who they're for. And uh, if they're completed, I put little circles, C, completed, and so forth. I go into a lot more detail in my pop videos about this, but the timeline tracker will definitely help you get your head around some of the dates and the events that happen over time. And this really helps when you're working on power layouts as well. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Lynn. Um, let's see. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Deborah. All right. Um, timeline. Yes. Fit pocket pages. You could fit pocket pages in there too. Uh, photo folders and note memorabilia. Yeah. Pocket pages in. Um, I'm not sure where pocket pages. I love the pocket pages. I'm not sure about pocket pages. Was there a question there? Um, let me know if there's a question about pocket pages. Um, Okay, so I hope this is all kind of starting to gel and uh, it's helpful to kind of see this process firsthand. And as someone who is kind of right in this with you, going through um, the process and making decisions. And, you know, it's really fun. You get, here's those memorabilia. So these little ticket stubs would go right into the photo folder for those photos, if I have photos with them. So those things are gonna go right in there. I'm gonna find the photos, put those in there with it, label it. And the whole beauty of this system is that now, instead of always pulling photographs out, you just flip through and you can see exactly what categories your photos are in. So, that is, has been a huge help to be able to kind of just at a glance, see everything. And it's the same, I would say for kids. So what I've learned for kids, you know, I do have, I've started, I have all about Adam and I do have personality photos, but my, in the process, I have to say, I was kind of like looking at a photo and going, is that all about Adam or is that a personality photo? Is that a personality photo or I don't know, is that him or is that personality? And so I just kind of gave up on the whole thing and just said, that's all gonna go just into his all about Adam box. And then when I start putting the boards out and looking at his whole album and organizing his album, then I will make decisions on, is this something that's his personality or is it something that, um, uh, you know, is it gonna go into a different category? And the same thing about his friends, you know, I do, I am pulling those because those are easier to identify. Oh, this is him and his buddy. So I did make a little tag for the friends section because I do see in his all about book, I'll have a tab and then all of his friends. So, you know, all those fun, crazy pictures with uh, kids and their friends. But then when we get into chronological, this is where I was gonna use that um, power sort, uh, power layouts process with all of these backlog photos. And again, that doesn't mean that I might look at a photo and go, if, if it doesn't go into kind of his uh, chronological book for his uh, growing up years, then that photo might switch over and go into a personality photo. So there's always that kind of decision-making process going on. Then I also realized back here that um, 
he has a lot of scalp pictures. And again, that's where you can make a personal decision. So am I going to do a scalp book? Okay, and I'm not gonna make that decision until I'm through printing and sorting and organizing all of his scalp photos. And then I'm gonna take a look and I'll go, oh, each one of these, these are right now by grade, first grade, second grade, third grade. <clears throat> do I need a whole album? Or is this gonna be a section in his All About Adam book? And so that's another thing too, is once you get your photo folders kind of set up, is that it helps you decide, is that enough for a whole album or does, can it be just part of an album? So I hope that, that kind of makes sense too. Okay, uh, any other questions? <clears throat> okay. Personality photos. Yes. Yes. Same type of trait at different ages. Exactly. Exactly. So I think what's, what the key is, is to kind of let those percolate in the grouping, you know, just go through, sort them all out. And then here's my thought is that once I've got everything in one place for a particular child, then I'm going to kind of throw all those pictures out and really kind of look at them and say, how do I want to organize these? Okay, of course, these are scouts and these are, you know, school pictures. But then I have this wonderful kind of middle ground of all these just different personality pictures of him growing up, you know, as a, you know, playing with water. Okay, so yeah, water is a theme. Now I'm looking, I'm going, yep, water is a theme. Water was always a theme when he was little. He loved it, you know. Um, food and eating, his brother, they were so close. So all those wonderful um, kind of interconnections start to come out when you let all those photos just kind of percolate together. So <clears throat> excellent, excellent. <clears throat> okay, any other questions? We have been going at this for a while now. I hope you're enjoying it. I had to... Um, Get something to drink. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of information. I, I can also tend to overload people. So sometimes I have to tell myself, you know, just stop, let it, let it rest, let people deal with that, let, let that information sink in and um, we can come back always and try again and learn a little bit more. So um, how are we doing? Is that any other questions coming, coming out at this point? You're enjoying it. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. So, you know, it's it's a big deal, right? It's a big deal to kind of get a handle on photographs and make decisions. But as I mentioned before, when you're in that process, I think it really helps to say, okay, I'm going to have an hour or I'm going to have two hours. And I'm really going to just take that time to be able to work in this space and, and touch my photographs and make some decisions. And it's kind of addicting when you get going, right? It's, it's kind of addicting because you start looking at it and you're like, oh, okay, I've, I've done those photographs. All right, now I wanna do these photographs. Okay, do I need a folder? Where do these go? And then bam, they're, they're sorted and then they're labeled. And then all of a sudden everything's starting to make sense. Because here's the other thing that happens is when I start looking, this is a year, you know, this was 1990, but just like I was mentioning before, I might start looking at this and go, oh, so even though I put this folder here in 1990, this was a trip that we took. So now I can just easily grab that folder and go, okay, here's a trip and oh, here's another trip. Okay, so now I'm going to grab these folders and this is going to go into um, the album of John and Lauren and it's going to be our trips, part of our trip sections, kind of like that, that those years, the dating years up until we got married. But now I know all I have to do is just grab these and put them together and now I have that ready to scrapbook. So the process really is is evolving when you're working on it you might go okay I'm just going to stick these chronologically you know but now that you start categorizing 
you're going to be able to look at those and then see the categories in a different light and go, oh, all right, I, you know, this is my husband's family. So all of these could easily, this could just drop right into people we love. And I could just put this into my library of memories into people we love because this is all about his family. Okay, so I hope that is starting to kind of gel and make sense. So once you get these categories, and even once you put them into a folder, you can always, you know, move those around as well. But the first step definitely is to get through your photographs, get through all those miscellaneous photographs and get them into folders and label them. And then, like I said, you start seeing these themes emerge and you start seeing little bits and pieces, if it's a pet or if it's a friend or if it's a family member, and then you get to start going, oh, I know where to put all this. Um, Cause that's a, you know, that that's part of your history. That's part of your library. Okay, so hi, Carla. It does take a while to sink in, yes, it does, it does. But, you know, we are in this together. And so I'll just kind of maybe wrap things up by saying, um, you know, a good place to start if you haven't already is with my YouTube channel. I have a whole series called Progress on Projects. And if you want kind of the background on how I developed that, the first video to watch would be how I would start over as a scrapbooker. Because I kind of tell you a little bit about my own journey and I started scrapbooking 25 years ago. So for me, that perspective piece was a very valuable piece to kind of look at and decide how I want to proceed because I knew I couldn't continue the way I was making albums. It was just, it was overwhelming and it was just too much. So, um, you know, a good starting point if you're new is take a look at that video, then start watching the pop series and all of the printables, as was mentioned in several of the chat comments, you can print these on my website for free. This is just because I want to help you guys. It warms my heart to no end that, you know, if this can help you start saving and preserving your memories, I am so so excited about that. So this is definitely for you um, to use and enjoy. And then you can set up your pop planner and start writing things down because that's the first step in making sense of where you want to be in your scrapbooking journey is to write it down for yourself. Ah, do I have any limits? I already have 20 large albums. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah. And, and, you know, that's, that's where I had to kind of stop myself because I was making two volumes for one year in my chronological books. And that's when I had to go, whoa, hold on. I can't continue. I can't continue in that album making process. And my biggest advice to someone who says, you know, how do I get a handle on this? Lynn, you're going to remember uh, it's it's Stacy Julian's term, and it's you can not scrapbook every photograph. You just can't do it. So you can scrapbook some of your photographs, but you cannot scrapbook all your photographs. And that's really what sunk in for me and why I kind of came to that ABC process, album worthy, archive, and delete. This is for digital photos. It's the same thing for printed photos. Is it album worthy? That is your number one choice because you cannot scrapbook all your photos. And so I know in the process, especially going back and looking at all of these pictures from years and years ago, I look at that and it's exhausting. And so I really keep asking my, myself the question, is it album worthy? Because when you start doing that, your album making is naturally going to condense, okay? It's naturally gonna get smaller. So that is the key, is that you really start looking at your photographs as to the ones that are really the ones that tell your story. 
and there's always reasons for you know posting you can you, you can still use your social media for all those fun silly things and maybe some of those will end up in your library of memories as things you do but that can also just be you know another keeper of photographs but the album worthy photographs the ones you really want to scrapbook to me those are the most important ones are the ones that have the story i mean really that's the whole one of the whole reasons not just the enjoyment of the the creative process, but really writing your history down, getting your, um, you know, telling your kids how much you love them and telling your husband or your family members how important they are to you. That is the beauty of making albums. And that's at least in my opinion and where I started from. So um, being able to tie that with photographs, the, the story and the reason with photographs and then having fun in the process, that's just icing on the cake. So that's just my perspective. And you know, everybody has a little different perspective. We all have our own reasons for scrapbooking and some people really enjoy the creative aspect. And I say that's wonderful because we're all different and you have to find what works for you. And so for me, what works is really streamlining the process and getting to the heart of my album making, which is really telling the story and telling my family and people about how I lived and what I celebrated and who was important. So that's, that's kind of my whole nutshell right there. <laughs> that's how I limit my albums. You know, it's, it's tough, but, um, you know, there's a part of us that, that I agree. There's this, you know, we love making the creative process too, right? So, um, yes, a good point, Lynn. She says, um, one of the things to consider is who will inherit my albums and what will they want? And then how many albums am I willing to move in the future, right? So that all, all those little bits and pieces have to go into your decision-making process. And uh, that's all really, really important to take into consideration. Um, and and I think that's kind of, you know, in the beginning, that's where I, I just, I was just making albums because I didn't think, oh my goodness, 25 years later, are you still going to be making albums? And are you still going to be working on your phone? Yeah, yeah. 25 years later, you're still going to be doing it. And not only that, but you might inherit photos and you might you know, not just your photos, your family from when you started, but now you've got all your parents' photos or grandparents' photos or, you know, all of that. It's all of that history. So um, one of the things I heard that I thought was maybe we'll kind of wrap things up with this idea too, is an easy, easy way that if you've created albums and you know, you're, you're not sure who is going to inherit them or, or something. An easy way to also document those and also to share with other people is to take, just take a quick digital photo of the album pages you've made. And I'm wondering if anybody has done this. This was a, a friend of mine told me, um, uh, she does this with her forever account and she has an album in forever. And so she'll take a physical uh, scrapbook album. Okay, so it's a, a, a photo, a scrapbook, a physical scrapbook album. And she'll open it to the first page and she'll take a picture of the first page, open it to the next page and takes a picture of each of those pages. And so each scrapbook page, you know, they might have five, eight photos, whatever on those. And um, she'll take a picture of that. So she'll have one picture for each page. And then she takes all of those photographs of her album and puts it into, this is sounding confusing, but then she puts it into an album, okay? Yes, you photograph your 12 by 12s. So, and then you can categorize those into an album. So now you have a digital file of that album. And that's the way some people are addressing kind of, you know, oh, I've got this huge library and who's going to enjoy them? And, and even the question, how would I duplicate it? I've got, you know, three children. So how would each of them get a duplicate? So now 
you can take that digital album of your physical scrapbook and share that. So that's just another little tip that you can do too. Okay, so how are we doing? Any other questions? It's almost four o'clock, you guys. We've been at it for two hours. I think this might be a, a good time to wrap up. <laughs> what do I do with photos of exes of your kids? Oh, what exes with the kids? You know, I, I think that's a personal choice um, and kind of just depends on on how you feel about that relationship. And um, I, I haven't had to deal with that a whole lot, but I do know when I've looked at photos of, you know, girlfriends my husband had, he kind of wants to keep those, but I'm not going to scrapbook those necessarily. <laughs> he, he may want to keep all those you know, in a box somewhere in his garage, but uh, it's not, you know, again, is it album worthy? Think about that. Is it album worthy? Is it, was it a special event for your kids? And then if it, if it's meaningful in that way, maybe make the decision based on that and yeah, put it into your kids' albums. Yep. So definitely always, there's always uh, ways to go about it. And, and there's always, Anytime you can change your mind too. You know, that's what I love about having folders and moving photos around, but having a system that you can just kind of see everything at a glance, I think is also really important. So, okay, well, I'm gonna call it an afternoon there and let's do this. If you have any questions, pop on over to the Progress on Projects Facebook group. That's Progress on Projects. Um, and that you can find me on Facebook. And my Facebook page is Craft Some Joy with Lauren Hines. And um, yeah, you know, it's always those ex photos. Okay, <laughs> so um, if you have more questions, that's a wonderful place to kind of ask and there's a community there that's growing that can help answer questions. And, and you know, what the wonderful thing is as that community grows, we have more and more answers and more and more people dealing with similar issues and approaching how they're getting things organized. So I love it. And Lynn helps me monitor that group and moderate that group. So I'm so happy to have her help and uh, always has great answers to questions as well. So, um, also, if you want to leave comments, this this video will go up on my YouTube channel. So I do try to pop in and answer comments and questions I have there as well. So um, I'm so happy all of you guys were able to join me today. And, uh, you know, let's get in and get our photos organized. And I'm excited and we can't wait until we get to make some more album pages. So... Thank you. Thanks, Rose. Thanks, Patricia. Thanks for joining me. And I'm going to sign off now and have a wonderful day or evening or whatever time it is where you are. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.